Hey, good morning, Summit Church, and welcome to our online live stream for July 19th, 2020. We've got a great service on tap for you today. Uh, we've got some worship and announcements and an impactful word from Pastor Bill coming up. If it's your first time, we definitely want to welcome you. So look in the chat below. Uh, there are some greeters here who are going to be posting a Connect card. We just want to get to know you a little bit better. So go ahead and click on that. And if you're here and you've been here for a while, well, then you're family. We definitely want to greet each other. So take 15 seconds and greet each other in the chat below. All right, welcome back from greeting, guys. We're excited to be uh, partaking in church together. So we've got some great worship on deck, and we will see you on the other side. To the King of glory and light, all praises. To the only giver of life.
for us, carried for us. See him now, our King surrender. Final word of perfect love. Hear his cry, Father, forgive them. Spoken for us, spoken for us.
pleasures that fade are never enough. And you came along and put me back together. And all my desires are now satisfied here in your love.
Lord bless you and keep you and make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you the Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace Lord bless you and keep you make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you the Lord turn
Hey church, welcome back from worship. It was great worshiping with you. Uh, we want to continue on with our worship and our tithes and our offerings. As always, we definitely need to provide for the needs of the house and the body of Christ. So there's a couple ways that we can do that. You can mail your tithes and offerings in. We have a couple people that do that. But the easiest way to provide your tithes and offerings to the church is through our app, which is available on Google Play and in the App Store, or through our online giving platform uh, located on our website, the summitchurchnj.org. As always, we definitely want to provide for the needs of the congregation as well. So if you need help with anything, feel free to reach out to us. If you need prayer, if you need assistance, we definitely have people that are here to pray for you and will help you however we can. In Along that same lines, we definitely want to encourage you to come out to prayer on Wednesday nights. We have prayer. It has been moved to Wednesday nights. We've seen a really great change in attendance there. It makes it a lot easier for people to attend. And we're really encouraged by the uh, people that we've seen coming out for prayer on Wednesday nights. So if you need prayer or if you just want to uh, get in, the, in God's face and see the power of God in your life, we encourage you to uh, participate in our prayer hour on Wednesday night, either through Zoom or in person. Yeah, that's right, in person. The church has started to meet again in person. That includes Sunday mornings. Um, there is no condemnation if you're not comfortable coming to church yet. That's why we do the live stream. But if you are, we would love to see you here. So keep an eye out on your email. We're definitely sending out emails each week with registration information to make sure that you get a spot in the church. All right, Pastor Bill's got a message on deck for us here that's definitely going to be impactful. So we'll see you on the other side. Good morning, everybody. It's so good to see you again today. Glad we could be together and glad we could dive into the Word of God today. We're going to be talking about freedom. Uh, so title of the message is Freedom in Christ, Part 2. And I, I hope you enjoyed last week. We're going to just keep on going from there today. So let's open up in a word of prayer. Amen. Father, we thank you for this day that you've made for us. Lord, we, we just revel in your goodness You've made this day. You know, you know what's coming. We don't. We don't need to because you've got our backs. We trust you, Lord. We don't lean on our own understanding, but in all your ways we acknowledge you, and, 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 and you make our paths straight. You, you cause the course to work out for our good as we love you, as we yield to you. So, Father, today I, I just pray that your words would resonate in our hearts this morning as we open up the bread of life, that we would... We would be, be enamored to eat that which you give to us. We would be thankful to receive that which you give to us. And I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would just cause revelation and truth to pierce into our hearts, into our minds, wash over us, cleanse us, strengthen us, transform us into the people you desire for us to be and the people that Jesus gave his precious life for on the cross. We thank you. We bless you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Our God is good, right? Okay, so last week we started to look at the kingdom viewpoint of freedom. And clearly the scripture teaches, as it did hope, that Jesus is our freedom. And he is our source of freedom. It was on the cross that he purchased our freedom. And yet, <clears throat> this seems, this truth, this amazing truth, just seems to clash with our our views on freedom but isn't that just like god <laughs> to clash with the world to clash with what we think we know all right so let, let's get into this you see because our father wants the best for us and he always has he gave his best in jesus in the giving of his son that's what we we know in john three sixteen. and so let's continue from last week we're going to i guess our main uh, verse if you will a text verse is uh, Galatians chapter 5 uh, verse 1 a and b <clears throat> and so let's read that it was for freedom that Christ set us free therefore keep standing firm and do not be subject again to a yoke of slavery Jesus went to the cross in our place to set us free from the power of sin and death by his grace through faith we come into a deepening love relationship with him we choose to follow jesus on a daily basis 
and walk in freedom as he did. Our faith in what he called us into gives us the strength to be holy as he is holy. Remember, he told us that. As we abide in him. Remember, we looked at John chapter 15. So as we abide in him, kingdom fruit comes from our lives. And as Jesus said in John 15, 8, my Father is glorified in this, that you bear much fruit and so prove to be my disciples. So let me ask you a question. <clears throat> Answer, type in, type in down below if you'd like. Can our freedom in Christ be abused? As with most things in God's kingdom, too often humans fail to, to see the breadth or the extent and the amazing largeness of what we have in Jesus. Or sometimes we simply miss his purposes. We don't understand why he says something or does something or calls us into something. We, we, we just miss the bigger purpose. And the concept of freedom is often misunderstood to mean that we can do what we want. Um, when we want, how we want. Uh, I'm sorry, but that's not, it's just not the truth. In Galatians 5.13, Paul warns us, listen to this, hear this now, for you were called to freedom. Brethren, only do not turn your freedom into an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. Now, he doesn't directly say it, but it is implied in the structure here that don't turn your freedom into an opportunity for the flesh or don't turn it into an opportunity for someone else to fall. We'll see that as we go on. Frequently, believers find our, our freedom in Christ to be the very excuse to indulge in what we might call gray areas, the gray areas of life. Not everyone, of course, but many of us do it. Some consciously, some not. You know, can a Christian smoke? Does the Bible say no to that? Can we drink alcohol? After all, Jesus seemed to do that. What about our style of dress? And, and when I say that I, here, I, I mean mostly like, like modesty, and I mean both men and women. Um, movies, parties, dancing, how we spend our money, even what we post on social media, all of these things come, come into the, the area of discussion related to our view on our freedom in Christ. Now, I'm not trying to pass judgment here because my goal is to point us to the truth, point us to what God's word says about these things. I want God's opinion to count in our lives, not mine. Call it a cop-out, but I'm just the messenger. It's kind of like Joshua. You know, in the very end of the book of Joshua, uh, he, he talks about your fathers and what, what you were raised with and blah, blah, blah. And, and he says, you guys go do, do what you want. But as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. It, it's, it's like that. And I don't mean that in any kind of condemnation. My, my goal here, my job here is just to, to point out the scriptures, what I believe Holy Spirit is saying to us today. He has been talking to us for months now of not same old, same old, changing our viewpoint, having 2020 vision, clear kingdom vision. This is what the Lord is saying to us today. So I hope, I hope you get some freedom out of this. Okay, so let's start at individual freedom. We're going to talk about Paul, and we're going to talk in 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Chapter 10. So if you want to go there. <clears throat> in the church at Corinth, Paul had to address many issues. If you read the book of 1 Corinthians, you will see some horrific stuff that you would not even believe was in the church, and yet he starts the book to the saints at Corinth. He's talking to the church. There were many issues in that book that stemmed from a believer's desire to satisfy their flesh. So let's look at how they distorted their freedom. Paul gives a very practical illustration. Uh, in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, uh, that's the one I'm going to look at here, verses 23 and 24. He says, all things are lawful. That's actually a phrase that apparently they used to refute what he was trying to bring correction to. All things are lawful, but not 
all things, he writes, are profitable. All things are lawful, he uses it again, but not all things edify. Let no one seek his own good, but that of his neighbor. See, we're hearing that same thing again. Um, the NIV actually says it this way. Everything is permissible, but not everything is beneficial. Everything is permissible, but not everything is constructive for someone else. Nobody should seek his own good, but the good of others. Okay, Paul mentions members who were attending meals in pagan temples just as they had done before receiving Christ. They felt free to continue participating in this because, after all, they thought these are festivals, this is the culture, this is a, more, a normal part of our social culture. They didn't see their actions as pagan worship. Now, stay with me. He laid out several warnings to, to these people, reminding the Corinthians of Israel's dangerous flirtation with idolatry as seen in the Old Testament. And that, obviously, is where he was teaching when he came to Corinth. He was teaching out of the Old Testament. That's the book he had. Then he handled the practical concern of specifically eating, eating meat that had been sacrificed to idols. And that's what happened in, this, in the city of Corinth. It wasn't a Christian city. The church there became powerful, but it was a pagan city. Everything is permissible, the, the Corinthians kept saying. True, Paul would say. However, Christians have a greater deal of freedom in Christ. And not everything is beneficial or constructive, he would go on. Our freedom in Christ must be balanced. Listen to this. Must be balanced by a desire to build up and benefit others. That's a powerful statement. It's not about you, he was saying to them. When deciding how to exercise our Christian freedom, folks, we ought to seek the good of others before we're concerned about our own good. That's basically what Paul is saying. You see, under the law, the Jews, the Jews could only buy and eat kosher meat. Paul said believers were free in Christ to buy and eat any meat. We find that in Corinthians 10, 25-26. However, if the issue of meat sacrificed to idols came up, believers were held to a higher law. So you see, we're held to a higher law. Love is what limits, if you will, Christian freedom. Because you can say, I've got freedom, I can do whatever I want. But love puts a constraint around that so that you don't harm others in the exercise of your freedom. That's where Paul is going. My freedom or your freedom? Which one's more important? Later, Paul, Paul writes about eating meat again as if you're a guest in someone's home. Um, and and I, I think this is around uh, 1 Corinthians 10, 27. Christians are free to eat whatever they are served without question of conscience. But if someone brings up the meat that has been offered to an idol, it is better not to eat it, not for your sake, but for the sake of the person who raised the issue of conscience. That's in verse 28. While believers have freedom to eat the meat, they are compelled, again, compelled by love, to consider what is best for those who may be observing their behavior. You see, now it's not what I do when I'm in my room, especially things like social media and, and, and all the rest. The world is watching us. We need to be mindful of that. <clears throat> How can abuse of our freedom create this unity in the body? So we went, we went to individual freedom and we talked to the my freedom, your freedom. But what, about, what about the body? What about the church? What about the other saints? We're going to flip over to Romans chapter 14. Still Paul. And I'm not going to read it, but verses 1 through 13 address this entire picture. Unity of the body was so critical to Paul. It should be critical to us. Unity is where God says in Psalm 133, he commands the blessing of life forevermore. I don't know about you, but I'd love life. I'd love God's kind of life. That actual Hebrew word is, is, is the, the Hebrew equivalent to the zoe, 
kind of life. And so that's what I'd like to, like to see in, in the summit and in the church at large. So Romans 14, 1 through 3 raises a key truth in understanding the limits of our Christian freedom. In this passage, Paul again brings up the meat eating, uh, sacrifice to idols, and also observing certain holy days. Some of the be- believers felt freedom in Christ uh, in, in these areas while others did not. See, so there was this conversation going on, a debate that was going on, and you know as well as I do, once we start getting to debate, all of a sudden it's the one who's loudest or, or the one who thinks quickest or something like that, and that can destroy unity. The devil loves that kind of ping-pong game. Their differing perspectives were causing quarrels and, dis- and disunity, and Paul emphasized that the unity and the love of the body of Christ are far more important than any one's any one particular personal conviction or, or Christian liberty. He says in verse 13, Therefore, let us stop passing judgment on one another. Instead, make up your mind. This is like before you start the conversation, make up your mind not to put any stumbling block or obstacle in the way of a brother or sister. Romans 14, 13. Essentially, Paul's message to the New Testament believers and and to us today is even if we believe that we are right and we have freedom in Christ in a particular area, if our actions will cause another brother or sister to to stumble or or question their faith or or think, I'm not talking about questioning the word, but but what do I believe? Is it right? Am I right? You know, and, and they begin to be shaky. We refrain out of love. One more point. How about responsibility for new or perhaps immature believers? We all think we're immature, and we should be. We should be constantly growing in the things of God. Um, But I don't have it all yet. You probably don't either. But we we, we move on. Paul said the same thing, but we press on. Um, So what do we do about someone who's not where we are? Okay, Paul spoke of this. We're back in 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verses 7, 8, and 9. It says this. Some people are still so accustomed to idols that when they eat sacrificial food, they think of it as having been sacrificed to a god. And since their conscience is weak, they are defiled. I believe this is New International Version. Um, <clears throat> but food does not bring us near to God. Did you hear that? Food does not bring us near to God. We are no worse if we do not eat and no better if we do. But be careful, however, that the exercise of your rights does not become a stumbling block to the weak. He's really clear. As I said earlier, I'm just the messenger. The issue in New Testament times was eating meat. Today, there are other gray areas. Um, that arise in our Christian walk. Romans 14, verse 1. The, these disputable matters where the Bible does not actually give clear-cut guidelines on whether a behavior is sin or not. And when we're faced with these gray areas, folks, I, I think we can, we can rely on two guiding principles that we see here to regulate our Christian freedom. Let love for others compel us not to cause anyone to stumble. Number two, let our desire to glorify God be our all-encompassing motive. You'll find that in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 31, 32, and 33. Now, as Paul said in Galatians 5, verse 13, Brethren, only do not turn your freedom into an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. So I want to encourage you today to to think about these verses. Go over these things and and see how your heart and your life lines up with these things. Is there something perhaps you need to change how you think? Or are there there aspects of your life that you just go gung-ho because I'm free in Jesus. Hallelujah. And you are. 
but the love that Paul talks about constrains us. I encourage you today to be more concerned about how deeply rooted you are in Jesus, the vine and the source of your life today, than how much you can do with your freedom. Jesus gave his life and paid our debt so that we could experience the freedom of doing all that God the Father has planned and purposed and created for you in your life for his glory. I just want to kind of leave you with that thought. Kind of put the cap, cap on things. And let's take a step back these days. We've got extra time for sure. Take a step back and, and let's appreciate the freedom that we have. Let's be mindful not to abuse it and certainly not to abuse our brothers and sisters. But let's grow strong in the confidence of what God has purchased for us. And let's demonstrate that and let his love, the most powerful, um, the most powerful force, if you will, in the universe is the love of God. Let's let that flow. And let's see how our lives can be an impact to the world around us as the church of Jesus Christ today. So I bless you with that right now. Let, let's pray. Father, as we come and, and, and just take a step back, let these words, Lord, flood over us. Let this word wash over us. Lord, we, we lay our lives on your altar today for you to, to choose and to do. We, we lay ourselves down as a human sacrifice, Lord, and we choose to remain there until you have done your work. Holy Spirit, come. Bring the, the, the truth to us. Bring your teaching. Bring, bring your correction. We yield ourselves to you. We humbly come before you, King of kings and Lord of lords, the source of our freedom, the purchaser of our, of our freedom, the creator of our freedom. And we come before you thankful for it, but wanting to use it for your honor and glory, wanting to have our lives reflect all that you choose to reveal to the world through us. That you, God, would be pleased as we walk in faith following you, Jesus, that you would just be pleased and we would receive the overflow of that joy in walking with you, in seeing, having the privilege of seeing the kingdom be demonstrated in the world around us. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I just want to bless you today as you go. I, I want you to have a wonderful week, and we'll see you again next week. God bless you. Bye-bye. Hey, everybody, welcome back. We just heard a message from Pastor Bill on freedom and the gray areas in freedom, and, and it was definitely a challenging message, and we hope that you got something great out of it and the Lord speak to you, spoke to you in it. Uh, if you need prayer or you need help, feel free to reach out to us in the chat below. We definitely want to pray with you and help you. One area that we don't see any gray in in the Bible is that everyone needs a Savior. And that Jesus came, died for our sins, and he's the only way to obtain salvation and to get entrance into heaven. So if today you've made a choice to follow Christ, we definitely want to help you with that. And if you've made a choice to follow God more deeply, we want to help you with that as well. Reach out to our prayer partners and our greeters in the chat below. We definitely want to see if there's anything we can do to help you on your faith journey. Well, church, that's the end of our live stream for July 19th, 2020. We're looking forward to seeing you guys again real soon in person. And if you need anything, again, feel free to reach out to the church. We love you. We'll see you next week.